Hello friends, welcome to SQL with Manoj. In my previous video, I talked about integrity constraints, how the constraints helps in maintaining the integrity of a database management system and a database. And with the specific to SQL Server, we saw what were the constraints available, like the entity integrity having the primary key and unique key constraints, the referential integrity having the foreign key constraint, the domain integrity containing the not null, default and check constraint, and some user defined constraints, right? And we talked about those at very high level. And in my this video and my coming videos, I'll be talking about each one of them in detail level, right? So today I'll be talking about primary key constraint. What exactly is a primary key and how does it help us in a particular database to store the data? So let's check what exactly is a primary key in few points. Okay. So the first point says that a primary key uniquely identifies a row in a database table. So if you specify a primary key in a particular table column, then you can easily identify a particular row. So how it does that, right? So the second point says the primary key constraint on a table column enforces unique values, okay, and not null values, okay? So by creating a primary key constraint, it only allows unique values, right? It does not allow duplicate values at all, okay? And it does not allow null values, right? So thus, if you create a primary key constraint on a table, you can easily identify each and every row in a particular table because every row in that particular table will be unique across and are easily identified by this particular column okay so every table can have only one primary key defined on a particular column or there can be more than one columns right you can create primary key on a table with create table statement or alter table statement right so create table statement while creating the table and alter statement after you have created the table without a primary key constraint right so first of all we'll see how to create a primary key constraint with the create table statement right and that too in two ways uh, so i'll take you to ssms okay, so here we are having the same example as i demonstrate in my previous videos dbu.employ here the dbu is the schema name and employees the table name and employees having these columns employee id employee name gender date of birth date of joining and department id okay so now in this table if i have to create a primary key so what column is the candidate for primary key right so by this what do i mean is how can i identify a particular record uniquely in this particular employee table okay so let's see employee id everybody knows it is unique across the organization so each and every employee has a unique employee id right employee name these can be multiple right two or more people can have one name gender it is male or female so it could be repeated many times date of birth can also be similar for more than one people date of joining right many people can join on one day department id yeah it can also be repeated because many people can want to work in same department right so across all these columns my candidate key is employee id so i can create this employee id as a primary key okay so now how can i create a primary key one way is to define the primary key here at the column level okay so how can i do that here just after the employee id and the data type i can specify primary key primary key option okay so thus by this syntax i can easily create a primary key okay let's execute it right and if i refresh the table it shows me the employee table with all the columns having orange key icon over here this shows that okay this employee key is created as a primary key and within the bracket you can see pk integer data type and not null right this is the property of this particular column and if you expand the keys right you can see the primary key name that is created over here so now you'll be seeing that you know this name is something that we didn't choose right so here there is no provision to give a primary key name so sql server internally chose this name right so what if we need to you know give a particular name to this primary key we don't want to give this particular name right so there's another way to create a primary key right so what i'll do is i'll drop this table okay and i'll create the table again with another way to create the primary key right so rather than specifying primary key here what i'll do is i'll create a constraint right i'll create the primary key constraint over here constraint the constraint name okay constraint name over here okay so this is my way to uh, give a particular name you can put any name here right in in any case correct so what exactly i want to create i want to create a constraint the constraint name is this and what constraint i want to create a primary key constraint i want to create primary key and within brackets 
I'll need the column name. Okay. So this is the syntax to create primary key in another way by specifying the primary key name. So rather than this, the primary key will be created by this name. Okay. So I have dropped the table. Yeah, I've already dropped it. Okay. Let's refresh. There is no table. I'll create the table and see the table is created with the primary key. Right. See primary key is created over here. And if you see here, the same name that we specified here, it has come over here. Okay. So this is all about creating primary key with the create table statement. Okay. Let's go to the points. So what if I have already a table with no primary key? How can I create a primary key with the alter table add constraint statement? Okay. How can I do that? Let's say I don't have a table with primary key, right? Let's copy this over here and I'll remove this statement. Okay. I have just a plain table. Okay. This table with no primary key defined, right? If you can see here, there's no primary key defined over here, right? So the, you can, uh, you can see there's no key icon and there's no primary key here, right? So with simple alter table statement, alter table, the table name. Okay. Then add primary key okay and on which particular column employee ID column right so this is the syntax to you know have this column as a primary key so I'm modifying this employee ID column property so that you know it can be created as a primary key right okay let's go ahead and execute it okay so you can see there is an error that cannot define primary key constraint on nullable column in table employee right so this column is nullable because we didn't provide it anything here it by default it took the null okay behavior okay so what I'll do is I'll, I'll alter the table okay alter the table the same table okay alter this particular column and make it not null okay so this way my column has been changed to not null from null right and after that what I can do is I can execute my this alter table statement with the addition of primary key okay so here it goes this is successful now right let me refresh this again okay expanding columns I can see you know this employee ID has been changed to primary key and you can see here the key is created over here but but again it has been created by some some internal name sequels were chose right so now how can I create a named primary key Okay, so what I can do is I can drop this primary key. So to drop it, you can, you know, just either, you know, delete from here or you can use the drop to statement, right? So the drop to statement goes like this, right? So what I'll do is I'll copy it over here. I'll show you how to drop a constraint or a primary key, right? So alter table, table name, drop constraint and the constraint name. Okay, so this is the same constraint name. Or, or the key name that is created over here okay what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and drop it okay so if I refresh it you will see there is no primary key right right so there is no primary key because the primary key constraint has been dropped right what I'll do is I'll so to define it with a particular name like the similar way we do here what we'll do is we will use the constraint name right the same way we used it here right so what I'll do I'll add constraint pk underscore employee id I'm giving a name over here right so you can give any name let's execute it see it got executed successfully and created a primary key with a named primary key or a named constraint right so this is how you create primary key two ways right one is the create table statement and that two in two ways right at the column level and at the you know this level and if you already have a table what you can do is you can change the column to not null okay then you can add the primary key this will create a unnamed constraint or drop the unnamed constraint and you can again alter the table and create a primary key with the named constraint right so this is how you create a primary key on a particular table okay so now let's see and go you know how this primary key column behaves while inserting records into it okay what I'll do is I'll insert some records insert into dbo.employee okay and I'll just take two columns I'll not take each and every column right I'll just take 
uh, employee ID and the employee name column. Okay. Values, let's say 100, comma, Manoj Pandey. Okay, so I'll insert one value here. Let's just see the records. It shows the first record entered as employee ID 100. Okay, so let's again try to insert the same record, right? So what I'm doing is I am I'm inserting 100 ID again on the employee ID column, right? So let's execute it again. So it will show that it will give an error, right? It shows that violation of primary key constraint. This is the constraint name cannot insert duplicate key into this particular table. The duplicate key is 100, right? So this shows me that, okay, you cannot insert duplicate values. All the values should be unique. Okay, let's try one more value, right? Now let's try to insert null, right? Let's see what it shows. So as the primary key, it cannot insert null value into the column flow ID table this column does not allow null insert fails right so it will not allow any duplicate value it will not allow any null value right so these two statement failed right so fail and fail okay so now the next statement says that you can create a primary key with an identity column okay so the identity property we saw in our previous video Okay, now I'll show you how to create a primary key with an identity column. What I'll do is I'll drop this table and I'll just take the create table script from the top and I'll execute at the bottom. And you know here what I'll do is I'll add identity. Identity with a base of 100, seed of 100 and the increment of 1. So in my previous video I show you the demo that you know this identity property it inserts the first record with 100 value and for the next value it increments the values with 1 okay so how does it behave so let's insert some values insert into employee okay uh, what I'll do is I'll take employee okay so when you are dealing with identity you don't have to you know specify this name because this column is already chosen by SQL Server starting from 100 right so the thing you have to provide is other set of columns right so employee name I'll put over here okay value okay so Manoj Pandey right values okay Manoj Pandey so it inserted the record on dbo.employee table with you know 100 value right so as this is identity column I don't need to specify the employee ID column while inserting records right so every time I insert a new record okay the employee ID will be incremented by one by one okay let's execute second record right you can see the next ID is created 101 okay so like if you insert like this and the next record the next record will be inserted like this 102 okay so this is all about you know creating a primary key with an identity column okay now the sixth point says that primary key can be composite key containing more than one column okay so let's say if you don't have an employee ID column let's say if you don't have an employee ID column I'll take an example of this again okay and I'll drop the employee table from my previous I'll drop the employee table okay and what if I don't have employee ID as a column basically you won't have this type of scenario but but in some cases there you won't be having a particular column but you know in some scenarios you might face these kind of issues where you won't be having any particular column that can identify a particular row uniquely right so employee name there can be multiple employees same names gender male and female so multiple records will have male or female date of birth more than one employee can have same date of birth date of joining more employees can you know many employees can join in same day and department ID many people can work in same department right so you have to be wise and choose your unique identity right let's say you can choose employee ID with date of birth so this is a very rare scenario that you know 
टू पीपल विद नेम ऑफ मनोज आर बोर्न ऑन सेम डे बट देयर कैन बी अ कॉर्नर केस सो वट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन क्रिएट अ प्राइमरी की ऑन एम्प्लॉय नेम एंड डेट ऑफ बर्थ और इफ यू और यू नो इफ देर इज कॉर्नर केस वेर यू नो टू एम्प्लॉयज विद सेम नेम हैव सेम डेट ऑफ बर्थ दे माइट बी अ वेरी रेयर केस यू नो दे ऑल्सो ज्वाइन ऑन सेम डे सो वट यू कैन डू इज रादर दैन मेकिंग primary key on these two columns you can make primary key on this particular column also right so to create so to add a primary key on this particular column what you can do is you can have a constraint added with pk underscore employ uh, this particular name and you know what is the constraint on name on dob and date of joining so this is irrelevant you can put any name but i'm just put i'm just giving it a name to define that the pk is based upon these three columns right now what do you want to create a primary key primary key on what all columns on employee name column okay employee date of birth okay and employee date of joining right so this is the syntax that you have to use while creating a composite primary key on more than one columns right so let's execute it right so if i refresh the tables you can see the employee table created with primary key on these three columns right you can see uh, the primary key symbol icon on these three and if you expand it it will show the primary key right you know you can even try to script the same right create statement right so it goes like this so if the table is already created you can alter you can use the alter statement alter table dbo employ add constraint the primary key name employee name date of birth date of joining right so this is a particular you know statement that you can use right if the table is already there right so what i can do is i can put or if the table is already there you can use this particular statement right okay so this is all about you know creating a primary key constraint on a particular table and you know we saw that you know primary key constraint enforces unique values and not null values to be inserted on a particular table every table can have only one primary key right you can create a primary key with the create table statement or later you can or use the alter table statement to add the primary key constraint right you can create a primary key with an entity column right and you know we just saw that primary key can be composite right we can create primary key with more than one column right so that's it for now in this video so in my next video i'll talk about primary key and the behavior of indexes so please like the video if you really like it and please let me know your comments and suggestions and please subscribe my channel thanks a lot